Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And today's podcast is part one of a two-parter taken from a video series I created called A Whole New Way of Thinking About Uncertainty. What these videos are about is uncertainty and how some fairly common misunderstandings and misperceptions about what uncertainty is and where it comes from can get in the way of a more comfortable, enjoyable, impactful, and powerful way of being in the world. And, and the first really common misunderstanding about uncertainty is that uncertainty equals stress. That because things are uncertain, the natural response to that must be a stress response. And so, People worry about uncertainty. They, they want to reduce uncertainty because they think if there's too much uncertainty, I'm going to get stressed out, burned out, freaked out. And if I could somehow control it and limit it, then I won't be so stressed. And that sort of points to the, the second misunderstanding of uncertainty is which uncertainty is a, a problem to which less uncertainty is the solution. And the ways that we try to create less uncertainty in the world are, are quite varied and incredibly creative. So one of the ways that we try to create less uncertainty in the world is to shrink our world down. So we stop watching the news. We stop having anybody who disagrees with us, who might put doubt into our minds in our world. And we shrink our world and we shrink our world until it becomes a, a very small, comfortable echo chamber where all we hear are our own points of view and opinions and, and yeah, the sky's not falling. No, the sky's not falling. Yeah, no, I don't think the sky's falling either. Oh, isn't it great that the sky's not falling? Woo! And, and you create a false sense of security and you become sort of, as one of my coaches once pointed out, I had become, uh, you, you know, a, a master at living on a postage stamp of possibility. Now, another way that, that people attempt to limit the stress and limit the danger of uncertainty by having less of it and limiting it and creating certainty around it is to create a really strong worldview. So to go, nope, this is the way it is, and I will accept no evidence to the contrary. And so by sort of blocking out any external feedback, we create a sense of internal reality that feels really stable. But the problem is, it may or may not have any alignment with the actual world. And when the world you're living in is different to the world you're really living in, i.e. the world you're living in your head, doesn't bear much resemblance to the world outside of your head. You're always going to struggle because the map is so far from the territory that you're going to spend a lot of time lost, feeling confused, feeling like you don't know where you're going and you don't know how you could get anywhere even if you knew where it was you really wanted to get. But the problem with all our strategies for limiting uncertainty are that the nature of the world of form is uncertain. It is inherently temporary, which is why in a lot of Eastern teaching, they talk about the world of form as the illusion and the inner world as real. And it's not so much a distinction between inner and outer as pointing to the fact that what appears in form is by nature temporary. A human life comes into form and might not pass out of form for a hundred years. A company might come into form and still be in form hundreds of years later. A statue might come into form and still be in form thousands of years later. 
but eventually everything that comes goes. And to look for certainty, to look for the sense of safety and security we think certainty will bring us in something that by its very nature comes and goes is a doomed endeavor, no matter how skilled at it you may become. Now, another misunderstanding is that uncertainty is the same as insecurity. So we think, unless I know what is going to happen, I cannot feel stable. I cannot feel grounded. I cannot feel solid. And so, again, we try to make the world less uncertain so that we can feel more secure. And we do it in a variety of ways. So we, we look to put our security onto money. We go, if I just have enough money, then I'll be secure. Because if I have enough money, nothing can touch me. But the nature of money is it comes and it goes. And over time, it comes and goes quite dramatically. And so if you build your house on shifting sands, it will never be really stable. Sometimes we, we attempt to build our security to counter uncertainty by going, okay, well, I need something I can be certain of. And, and so if I have uh, a solid enough reputation, if, if, I, if I can achieve enough status in the world, then I'll be safe. But you only have to look at the cover of Hello Magazine or People Magazine over the course of a couple of years and see how the people who are exalted in March are, are crashed down in September and then rise like the phoenix from the ashes the following January, but then crash again in July. Reputation is far too fickle for us to find certainty, for us to find security. Another place we look is power. If I have enough power over people, if I have enough control over others, then I can control the level of uncertainty. Or if I can just find somebody to love me enough, then I'll be safe. If I can just find somebody solid, a good woman, a good man, then it will all be okay. That will be the, the rock on which I can build my church. But you may have noticed that human beings are pretty variable over time. And even the most solid of them vary from time to time. So whether we think that you know, we can just subjugate people to our will or we can find that one person who's going to just make it all okay forever. We're forgetting the basic rule of uncertainty, which is that anything that comes into form will eventually go out of form. That which is born will die. So even if we do find that one person, they may not be here. In fact, they won't be here forever. And so again, at some level, we know that. So we never get that certainty that we're looking for, that we think is going to bring us that security that we crave. But if it feels kind of hopeless, <laughs> like, well, what's, what's the point? If I can't find it in, in, in money, and I can't find it in status, and I can't find it in power, and I can't find it in people, am I doomed? to just be insecure in this uncertain world forever, there's some very good news coming. So a, a kind of a bonus question that I'll leave you with between parts one and part two is if safety and security were innate, in other words, if they weren't up for grabs, how would your relationship with uncertainty change? Have fun, learn heaps, 
happy exploring, and I'll be back with part two next week.